You're now tuned in to the Desire to Trade podcast, a show where we bring you the best figures of the trading world and teach you how you can become a successful trader. This is your host, Etienne Kret. What's up, guys? So today I'm with another trader, and we'll have another review on trading, I suppose. Uh, this trader is actually from, from the UK. His name is Jason Greystone, so he's going to talk about his story overall. So what's up, Jason? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great, thanks. Thanks for having me. You're doing great things over here. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. I want to first ask you, as I always do, uh, what's your favorite quote? Oh, my favorite quote. Well, uh, there was one. That it always have to be, it's a, it's a Winston Churchill quote, and it is. it goes, success consists of going from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. And that has, has really... I've resided with that quote along my whole business life, really. It, I've, I've encountered many failures, and um, I always strive to succeed. I always forget the failures and, and build on the successes, and I think that's really important. So what is going on exactly these days for you? Uh, well, these days, um, these days I'm a full-time currency trader, and by full-time, I mean I actively day trade for three hours per day during the London Open. And after that, I'm, I'm pretty much free to do whatever I want. I, I, I swing trade, so I keep an eye on the, on the higher time frame charts. But other than that, I keep myself busy in the gym, and that's about it, really. <laughs> that's a lot of freedom. I like it. <laughs> How do you start trading exactly? I mean, I've been interested in business and, and the market since I was at, at school, really. I, I studied economics, but I, I didn't do too great at school. Um, you know, I come from a, a normal family. My my dad worked, and my mum was a was a housewife. And I, I I left school with sort of average grades, and uh, I actually wanted to become uh, a fireman when I left school. <laughs> but I I ended up getting a, a job as electronics engineer with a small company, and I knew from a, a very young age that working for someone wasn't wasn't really me. It, it didn't really sit right with what I wanted to do. I always wanted to do things my own way, and you know, in that way, if something went wrong, it was only me to blame, and I, I, I kind of liked it like that. So, I was always giving sort of hundred percent into whatever I did. And after about five years, I thought I can do this. You know, I'll, I'll go into business on my own. So, I, I, you know, my wife, me and my wife, we took the, we took the plunge, <laughs> and uh, I started. Um, we we just had our first baby as well, and and we just moved house, and you know, I just I was twenty one years old. I, I decided to take the plunge and really go in at the deep end and and start a business. So we started a we started a company out of the uh, out the back of my shed, my garden at the time. To cut a long story short, we built we built the business up to to a substantial size. You know, we, we've uh, it, it allowed me and my family to have some some great some great experiences that I, w- I wouldn't have dreamed of, of as a kid. So um, it got to a good size and. It was about three or four. It was about four, four years ago. I, I, I had a bit of money behind me, and I, you know, I had a friend that was was looking to take one of these professional trading courses, and I saw that they were holding a free seminar in it in London. So this was this was new to me, but it was you know it was all the usual get rich quick, um, double your account in a year, and you know fifty percent returns in a day, <laughs> and I thought you know this. I've got a few quid. What have I got to lose? So um, we went along to this this posh hotel in London, and they're hosting an introduction for the course, explaining, you know, how we could have our own yachts and mansions and helicopters, and really dwelling on the on the get rich quick sort of side of it. And after weighing up the options for about five minutes, me and my friend signed on the dotted line, and we we enrolled in the course. But about a month after taking the course, I was, you know, supposedly a a professional trader <laughs> in, in inverted commas and to cut a long story short I, I was about 10 grand down about 10,000 pounds down none the wiser um, so what did I do next well instead of actually trying to see what I was doing wrong I looked for the next system that promised a, a hefty return or 100% return in my account or you know a, another get rich uh, scheme for me at this stage it, it wasn't really about the get rich quick attraction anymore it was sort of my competitiveness coming into play it was it was angering me why I hadn't mastered it straight away and and like most people you know I, 
I don't have the best patience. And when it comes to learning new things, I, I wanted to know how to do it straight away. I, I, I think it's human nature to want to be able to do things straight away. So, you know, I, I found myself on the next training course offered me offered me a um, automated system this time, where you just click buy or sell, and you know the signals present themselves, and you double your account in a year. Yeah, right. Um, so, you know, I was full of desperate hope. Where do I sign? Sign signed up, and this time I thought to myself. You know, you're not going to get me this time. I'm going to use a demo account. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so I opened a demo account and started trading that with the automated system. The problem is, I, I, I suffered with the uh, "this doesn't feel real" syndrome. So, I, I didn't get emotionally motivated by the trades, and you know, little did I know that later that that's exactly what you don't want to be. You don't want to be emotionally attached to the trades. But before I knew it, I was I was applying real capital and. After course fees and software fees and other donations to the market, I was around another twenty thousand pounds down. So, you know, I was I'd be earning money for a little while, and then I would lose double what I'd won. And you know, whilst trading, I'd, I'd have this battle in my own head about, you know, oh look, this it's going in my favour. You know, let's take the profits off now. And then I'd be thinking, yeah, I know, but if you leave it, you know, you could get double. And and when it was going against me, I was you know, I was a wreck. I, I would say, oh, should I move my stops because you know, I could give the market some more room? And I'd be having this battle. It was like I had two minds and I'd be having this battle day in, day out. And it was exhausting. You know, it, it really affected, it, it did affect my home life at some days. My mood was bad. I didn't want to talk. And, you know, the other stuff that comes with, all that other bad stuff that comes with over trading, it's just, um, it's just awful. So that that's generally how I got into trading. Mm -hmm. And how did it change after that moment? What did you do to uh, get better in trading? Um, well, from that point, um, I wasn't going to let it, it get me. You know, I was extremely competitive. I really wanted to do this. And I was I was starting to think, you know, it's just a black art. I, I, I was wondering if anyone was actually making money on this. So, or, or was it just a way to earn money for these, you know, these educational companies? I kept thinking to myself, You know, I need to give this a shot. If I get it, I'll be able to do what I want for the rest of my life. But I, I sort of, well, by this time, I sort of really felt that I owed it to myself and my family. Uh, you know, I'd lost quite a bit of money. And it was one day I, I stumbled across a, a guy on, on YouTube called Jason Stapleton. And I'm sure, you know, some of your listeners will be familiar with him anyway. But after watching his work and some of the content on there, I immediately got the feeling that you know these guys sort of want to help people become successful. That it was, it was, it was different from anything else I'd seen. And what really stuck in my mind was the vast amount of high quality uh, free content that the guys had quite obviously worked extremely hard to put together. And I, I remember one article called "Stop the Bleeding, Stop Trading," um, and that really stuck in my mind because it made me realise that there was a way to master this craft. And it wasn't the automated systems that were the issue. It, it wasn't even the, you know these criminal educational promises to uh, to you know double your account in a year. The only problem was me. And once I realised the problem was me, it was so obvious. You know, I didn't have a hundred percent trust in what I was doing because I hadn't created the system myself. I didn't know why I was taking the automated trades. I didn't know how to manage a trade, I didn't know anything about risk management, money management, and really I was I was back to square one. So, you know, I, de I decided to go in one more time and, and sign up for their course, um, which is the, the Trade Empowered course. Um, and the guys, you know, they would, this time I was genuinely excited. These guys were, were the real deal. I was I was sure of it. And after joining the course, I immediately felt the difference in quality. There was no underlying dark hidden agenda for the company to profit out of your naivety or a you know a promise to get you a hundred percent return in your account if anything it was the complete opposite they, they were you know the, in fact the realness and the honesty of the guys on there was overwhelming and actually quite refreshing it was um it was it, this excited me obviously uh, after watching every youtube video and all of the free training on their site i had a complete mind shift Um, the fact that these guys were so dedicated to creating consistently profitable traders uh, and, and, you know, they actually cared 
whether you succeed or fail. It, it just gave me a whole new perspective on what I needed to do and where I wanted to be, really. So the first thing I promised myself was I'm not going to lose another penny of my money until I'm trading it with a strategy that I've tested and has a positive expectancy. So, I, you know, from there on, I, I took each week of the course extremely seriously. I did the homework, you know, the, this course was a real deal. I, I uninstalled all my bad habits, reinstalled new habits. I was professionally mentored. I had access to you know psychologists um, for the mental side. It was just it was just unbelievable. And um, you know, I, I think I, I became the, the value for money was just compared to all the rubbish I'd been a victim of in the past. Uh, it was just it was just all you know. It was far above the rest. It was it was amazing really and, and that's when it changed that's when my trading started to change well i'm glad you mentioned a couple of points which are really interesting you said first of all uh about information overload yes so i think that's a big part of it i think it's too easy to get any strategies online or any tips online but in the end if you're not applying then nothing's going to work exactly and you also that. said yeah you also said sticking to one strategy and this is i think one key also in my in my trading and the last thing you mentioned is, yeah, of course, you're getting a, like a course and getting something serious about it. So what made you go from one course to the other without never stopping? Um, because I didn't realize these people were promising me that I should be good. Or I think it's because of the promises in the first instance. They're promising you that you can be successful. They're promising you all these things you can have by taking their course and Really, as you're taking the course, you're expecting those rewards. You, you you think that if you're not getting good at it or you're not achieving what they're telling you you should achieve, then it's you know, you're doing something wrong or the system doesn't work or it's it's not they don't actually guide you on why you're taking the trades, especially with the automated systems. Unless you know exactly why you're taking those automated system trades the psychology just isn't there to stay in the trade when it starts going against you. You're not expecting drawdowns. You know, one thing, the difference with the, the last course that I did, the 12-week the transformation course, is it teaches you that everything has to come from you. You have to develop the plan. You have to do all the backtesting, the hours and hours of backtesting the strategies. And once I would, you know, I'd pick a pair. I, I started right back at basics. I picked one pair, one time frame one strategy and I back tested that back for you know the last hundred trades then I forward tested that for two months it was only then that I applied real capital to that whilst I was back testing the next strategy on the next pair and you know it wasn't a rush there's no rush to make money you just need to learn the craft properly now what is your worst trading failure oh my worst trading failure um Actually, the worst tr the worst losing trade for me, aside from when I didn't know what I was doing with you know the automated systems and before I had a trading plan, um, I remember I spent most of the week eyeballing this setup, uh, doing my analysis. I, I predicted the move in the market. I had my entry target stops all worked out in my mind, and I had them all written down. So price action came down to sort of the area I was looking at, and. Um, you know, I was looking for reasons to get involved in the trade, and I was looking, I was looking at my trading plan and seeing what would allow me entry into this trading opportunity. And I was dropping down to lower time frames and doing more analysis. I just could not find a reason for entry that met my trade plan. You know, I'd worked very hard to to build this trade plan. I was trying to be disciplined to stick to it. And anyway, price action came down to the level I was watching. I, I couldn't. I couldn't enter because I, I didn't have, you know, nothing met my rules. And would you know it, the market turned on a dime, started moving towards my first target. And because uh, this is because I was trading two contracts and, you know, the volatility started to increase. Price action was moving quite quickly. And what did I do? I broke my rules. I got involved, you know, in the trade almost to my first target. So I got involved late for the sake of it, you know, just for the sake of being in the trade. I entered the trade long, and, and then what happened? Price action turned straight round on my first target and took me out. It was, uh, you know, it was it was silly. It, it hurt most because 
it was particularly painful because I, I broke my rules. You know, I, I, not only had I predicted the move that happened and I missed it, but I let myself down by, by breaking my rules when really I should have just patted myself on the back for doing the correct analysis and just moved on to the next trade. Uh, so that was that was a bad one for me. Mm -hmm. So what is your main trading style today? So what exactly do you trade and what do you look for? Okay, well, I trade, um, firstly, I only trade currencies, so uh, mostly the major pairs. I've, I've back-tested around 10 pairs and I trade uh, six of those. I trade the Euro-Yen, Uh, pound yen, euro dollar, pound dollar, and also trade the uh, Aussie dollar and the Aussie CAD. And I day trade for around three hours during the London Open, which means that I go all the way from the daily charts down to the five-minute charts. Um, and I also swing trade on the four-hourly and the 60-minute charts. Um, strategies, I trade some advanced patterns, Um, you know, Gartley patterns. Uh, I'm a technical based trader, so I, I, I trade Gartley patterns, BAT patterns, Cypher patterns, and I also trade uh, a CTS system, which I was taught in the course. It's um, CTS stands for Combined Technical Scoring System, and really, it's a it's a scoring system that you build up based on um, points for entry. So, you know, if the RSI is overbought, that's one point. If you've got a double top, that's another point. If you've got an advanced pattern completion, that's another point. And you add up the points and you create a trading plan uh, and a minimum entry level for uh, based on points for you to take the trade. And it really helps to keep your discipline um, and it helps you to, you know, only take, it builds up a discretion. It allows you to only take the, the, um, high high probability trades if that makes sense now what do you think made you stick to one strategy at some point how did how did that happen um because back testing i back tested the strategies and back testing is one of the worst things i've ever done uh many many times falling asleep at the spreadsheet i've done around 500 hours of back testing in total And I just thought, you know, this strategy works. I'm not going to test another one. I'm not going to jump to another one. I just want to get, you know, some trader's discretion and get good at and get better at, at what I'm doing rather than, you know, move on to another system. This, the, I know the exact, I know the probability of the trades. I know it has a positive expectancy. I know it's repeatable. I know it's verifiable. So there's no need for me now to jump to another system. Now, just to try to get that point, I want to ask you: What is your win rate ratio exactly? My win rate, my win rate ratio. Um, I'm around a fifty percent trader. So you know, every every trade I take, I lose a trade. Uh, every trade I win, I, I lose a trade. But the the point is, all the trades that I win, you know, have a greater outcome than the the ones I lose. So it's all about risk reward. I don't take trades that have an inverse risk reward. Um, some Gartley patterns, for example, if they have an inverse risk reward, I stay out of them. They're not in my rules. Um, so every trade I take has at least a one to one risk reward ratio. Um, but all the patterns I trade and all the CTS stuff that I've back tested, uh, they're all, they all have a positive expectancy of over sort of 60, 60%. That's really what I wanted to hear because a lot of people think. You have to win a lot to uh, to make money. But. Yeah, yeah. You hear about. I mean, some of the courses that I went on in, in the UK, you know, they were saying, "Yeah, well, I'm a 90% percent trader." Well, that's all good, but you don't see what sort of drawdowns they have to take. And it's only when you apply your real capital that you know that doesn't sit very well with you when you're actually watching your account go down by that much. It, it's it takes a. You need to pick a trading strategy that suits well with your personality. If you're if you're going to be a 90% trader but you've got to take a drawdown for you know 14 trades in a row well that's you know I'm out of that one <laughs> I can't <laughs> sit there and watch 14 losses in a row I tell you that now now I want to ask you um, so once you have your strategy what do you think is necessary for people to succeed I uh, can well I tell you they need to once they've once they've once they've back tested the strategy I'll tell you this if you're thinking about getting into trading 
you know, don't keep searching for the next system that promises to be the best. Don't trade any live capital until you've developed a trading plan that suits your personality and your lifestyle. You know, when, when you're available to be in front of that PC at the same time every day, you have to have backtested that plan and found it to be, you know, have a positive expectancy and for it to be verifiable, repeatable. And, and by that, I mean, you know, make sure you've forward tested your plan too before applying capital. And then all it is a case of is very simple is coming in each day and sticking to your trading rules that you've tested. Do not deviate away from your trading plan and be consistent. Do the same thing every day, each day, and don't change your rules at all. Now, what is your way of sticking to it, to your rules and not changing your plan? Well, <laughs> I mean, the hardest hurdle for me was psychology. Uh, that has to be the hardest thing when you're learning how to trade. But I've, I did many things on my trading journey with Trade Empowered to help with my discipline. You know, I, even outside of trading, I would, I would take on sort of activities that I didn't necessarily want to do, and it was about getting out of my comfort zone. You know, I decided to take up a challenge to cycle to Amsterdam, for instance, and I, you know, I'd never been on a bike, and all of a sudden I was cycling 350 miles, was doing these training rides, and it really helped with my discipline and now i i'm sort of feel like i'm in control of of my mind so i and the more you come in each day and do the same thing over and over again it just becomes repetition it, it's not like there's no emotions involved now it's just i must do this i must do that and i'm following a plan rather than taking trades based off emotions so it's just for me it's just about discipline working on your own discipline and doing the same thing each day without deviating from your plan at all. Do you have any sort of uh, review system for your trade that you go over your trade afterward? Yeah, I do. Um, I journal every trade that I take uh, just so I can see my performance. And I also write down whether it was a good trade, bad trade, you know, if I, if I made a mistake, uh, if there was news out, because I don't trade off, off news. I'm always aware of news and, and fundamental um, news and stuff like that, but I don't let it affect my trading plan. I'm always aware when it's coming out. But if you know if, if news takes me out on a trade, then I make a note of that. I also do my top-down analysis at night as well. So once I've finished my day trading, I'll look back on my trading day and see what happened after. I think that's very important. Note down what happened after you came out of the trade, whether you got stopped out or took profits. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's definitely great. So what do you think is the main takeaway people can get from your story in general? Uh, I think the main takeaway for listeners is, I mean, it really touches on the last answer. I mean, just, if you're getting into this, just sell out, just invest in yourself completely. You know, we're coming towards the end of 2015. Take 2016 and say, do you know what, this is my year. I'm going to do something better this year than last year. I'm going to make progress. Believe in yourself. You know, believe in yourself. Take massive action. You know, get the results that you can achieve and let those results filter into your initial beliefs. Um, most importantly, whilst going out on your new trading journey, make sure you carefully select who you spend time with. You know, Try and filter out any negative people around you um, until you've come out the other side. That's one thing that helped me. I, 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 there was many people telling me, you know, what are you doing? You're mad, you're mad. Um, and really, that's all to do with 80% of the people being in a, in a comfort zone. And there's only sort of 20% of the world outside of the comfort zone. But it's only those 20% that are going to have the life that they want. It's helpful. I like it. So how can people find you these days? Um, well, I'm on uh, Twitter. Uh, J underscore Greystone and tradingview.com as well with the same. Um, you can look me up over at www.tradeempowered.co.uk where I've just uh, partnered up with Trade Empowered myself and we are running a London live room from the 1st of December. It's, uh, it's free for a week. So anyone that wants to come in and see what I do, watch me trade live for three hours every day, that would be great to have you there. Uh, so you can contact me through them as well. Mm -hmm. And just for the benefit of the listeners, we've had uh, Akil's talk here from Trade Empowered on the podcast a few weeks ago. I think it's episode 10. And we've, we've had also Todd Brown, which oh, is one of the founders of uh, Trade Empowered. Yeah. 
Ah, uh, cool, yeah. Akil's a great guy. He was my mentor. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what are the goals you have for your future? Uh, goals for this year. I mean, um, I don't know if, if Akil mentioned uh, the Kaizen philosophy, which is a, a Japanese philosophy, meaning continuous improvement. It's uh, It was taught to me by him, and it, I promised myself I'll do one thing every day to improve my skills. You know, this isn't just trading. It's more to do it's, it's more to do with trying to make one less mistake so you know i'll improve my craft each day and that's if that's being a dad a husband a trader you know whatever that's that's my continuous goal but my main goal is to help others become successful in trading by coaching them um like i say i'm running the live room uh, people can come in and watch me trade and um you know it's a great community over there from traders from beginner right through to professional you know there's multi-million pound traders in there as well uh, it's a really great community, no trolls, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just a great opportunity to help others and bounce ideas off each other and, and work together. What keeps you motivated to uh, trade every single day and wake up and go go trade every single day, basically? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm quite competitive anyway, you know, uh, if I have competition, I'm extremely motivated, but in the currency markets, there's enough money for us all. And, uh, you know, unless you're an institution, you don't really have any competition. So it's difficult to keep motivated motivated in trading by competition. However, I would say one thing without a doubt that keeps me motivated is just my family. You know, I, my children, my wife, I look at them and I just think to myself, I'm never, ever going to let any of you down. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to provide the best life I can for you because you deserve it. And that's really what keeps me motivated. I like that. So just to remind the listeners, you can find out all the show notes on thisartotrade.com and we'll have the show notes for this specific podcast on thisartotrade.com forward slash Jason. And Jason, I have one last question for you. Okay. Ready for that? So if you could give only one piece of advice on how to thrive as a trader, what would that one piece of advice be? Right, here goes. Create a plan that suits you. Test the plan. Test the plan with the trade the plan with the strictest discipline and do not deviate from the plan. And in the words of my own mentor, Akil, plan your trade and trade your plan. That's it. <laughs> I like that. Having a good plan. <laughs> That's awesome. Is there anything else you want to mention to the listeners of the Disaster Street Podcast? Uh, I'd like to say thanks for having us again. I hope you enjoy the story and realize that you know I'm just like everyone else trying to get into trading and um, you, you can do it if you put your mind to it and put the effort in. Awesome. So I'll see you back in the next episode of the Desire to Trade podcast. Great Bye. stuff. Thanks for listening to the Desire to Trade podcast. To get all the information on this show, free articles, and unique resources, make sure to check out www.desiretotrade.com and subscribe. Please leave us a review and let us know what you thought about the show. It's time to become the best trader you can be. See you next time.